Hi guys, welcome back to Lucas 3D Studio. In this video, let's take a look at the newest filament dryer from Sunlu, the Fila Dryer SP2. Now, these are the first batch of samples Sunlu sent me to test out, so the released version might differ slightly from the ones shown in this video. The Fila Dryer SP2 is Sunlu's newest filament dryer, and what's cool about this filament dryer is its versatility. Place the drying chamber on top of the heating base and use it as a dryer or remove the drying chamber from the base and use it as storage to keep your filaments dry. With its modular design, you can also just get the drying chamber without the heating base to use as filament storage and stack multiple chambers like this to optimize your storage space. The Filler Dry SP2 comes with a drying chamber made of a PC and ABS mix. There are 6 filament outlet holes on the chamber, each with a silicone plug so you can seal them when using the chamber for storage. Now slide these latches to open the lid. The lid also has a silicone lining inside it to keep the chamber airtight. You'll also get the heating base, which features triple safety protection, PTC and fan heating, a secondary temperature protection switch, and a software-based smart temperature control. Other goodies include a spool roller, airlock foot pads, metal rollers with bearings, and a hygrometer with a desiccant pack. Before we assemble everything, let's also take a look at the drying chamber, which you can get separately or part of a bundle with two rolls of filament. You'll get the same accessories that come with the SP2 minus the heating base. Sunlu sent me the bundle with a roll of PLA and a roll of nylon filament, which is great since I'll be using those for testing later. It's super easy and straightforward to put everything together. Let's start with the hygrometer. Cut the desiccant pack open, pour it into the desiccant box and close the lid. Next, slide the hygrometer with desiccant box into the groove at the side of the chamber. Next, install the metal rollers, insert them into the bearings and push them into the recessed groove at the bottom of the chamber. Make sure the rollers rotate smoothly. To use the drying chamber as airtight storage, install these foot pads with silicone lining on the bottom of the chamber. Then close the lid, secure the latches, and plug all the outlet holes. The lid has a handle, making it easy to carry around. Now let's take a look at the heating base and how to operate it. Use the provided power cord to connect to power supply, flip the switch at the back of the base to turn it on, then tap the power button to wake up the screen. Tap the setup button to change the settings of the dryer. When the temperature unit flashes, you can switch between Celsius and Fahrenheit by tapping either the up or the down button. To manually change the temperature, tap the setup button until SV flashes. Use the up or down button to set it between 35 degrees Celsius and 70 degrees Celsius. When Sunlu flashes, you can cycle through four lighting modes. In steady mode, the light stays on. In flowing light mode, the light flows until the temperature reaches the preset level, then switches to steady mode. In diffusion light mode, the lighting effect will remain constant. In off mode, the light turns off. When the filament type flashes, you can cycle through 6 filament profiles and it will automatically choose the optimal drying temperature and time. To set the drying time, tap until the time flashes. You can choose anywhere from 1 hour to 99 hours. The fan in the base blows hot air through the vents, keeping the air circulating inside the chamber for faster drying. Make sure to keep the outlet holes open to let moisture escape and always secure the lid tightly to prevent any heat loss. To turn it off, tap the power button twice. Keep in mind that the fan will stay on for 3 minutes to prevent heat buildup. Now that we know how it works, let's dry some wet filaments. For the drying test, I'm gonna dry PLA, PLA+, PETG, TPU, and nylon filaments. Since I don't have wet filaments, I'll induce moisture into them. For nylon, I'll leave out a roll of filament in the open for two days. For the others, I'll use a DIY climatic chamber made from these glass tanks. It's a quite simple setup. One tank filled with water and a heater to maintain a constant temperature. I'll place a smaller tank to trap the warm, moist air and there's a small opening above it to let excess moisture escape. Then I'll insert the filament rolls and leave them there for a day. This is a standardized method to simulate a humid environment in a short amount of time. 
Since a lab climatic chamber costs thousands of dollars, I kind of improvised here. It's been 24 hours and you can clearly see condensation inside the chamber, which is exactly what we want. Let's remove the filaments and let them dry at room temperature for another full day. Since the recommended temperature and drying time for PLA, PETG, and TPU are the same, I'll dry them all together. I've set the temperature to 55 degrees Celsius and will dry them for a little over 6 hours. Next, let's dry our nylon filament at 70 degrees Celsius for 12 hours as recommended. I'll also measure the power consumption to see how much electricity it uses at maximum settings. After 12 hours, it used about 1.2 kilowatt hours. It peaked at 130 watts in the first hour while heating up, then maintained around 100 watts per hour. With my electricity cost of 30 cents per kilowatt hour, that's about 36 cents in total. Let's print this part with the wet nylon first, then with a dried roll. Now is a great time to show you how to use the dryer as an external spool holder. Just insert a short PTFE tube into any of the six outlets and feed it to your printer. You can clearly see air bubbles and string on the wet nylon and an almost perfect print using the dried filament. Next, let's print with a wet roll of red PLA, then the dried one. There aren't any significant differences here, which suggests that this PLA didn't absorb much moisture. Let's test the wet PLA+, plus, then the dried one. You'll notice light stringing and small air bubbles in the print, while the dried PLA+, plus prints with no issues. The wet PETG shows a lot of air bubbles and some stringing. The dried version still shows some bubbles but no stringing can be observed. As expected, the wet TPU has air bubbles and stringing, while the dried TPU prints cleanly. Besides drying and storing your filaments, the Filadry SP2 has a large capacity chamber that can fit spools from 250 grams up to 3 kilograms. You can use the included spool roller to hang smaller 250 gram spools. There are 6 filament outlet holes with silicone plugs, so you can choose any outlet when using the SP2 as external spool holder and seal the rest to keep the chamber dry. The independent hygrometer with desiccant is great for monitoring the chamber's humidity and passively drying the air. Leave it inside while drying to regenerate the desiccant beads when they turn green in color. I also printed this spool-sized desiccant box in PC, filled it with wet beads and dried them in the chamber. It took just 2 hours at 70 degrees Celsius to fully regenerate. The drying chambers can be stacked on top of each other, which maximizes vertical space and minimizes storage footprint. The Filadry SP2 will be available starting May 19th, and Sunlu is running a pre-sale so you can get it at a reduced price. Here are the prices for the SP2 and the separate chamber with filament bundles. Check the link in the description to grab yours before the pre-sale ends. If you find this video helpful, please leave a like and a comment to support the channel. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.